You don't think we can finish this? I don't think I can finish this. <laughs> hey guys, so you guys asked for it and I brought them back. Llama's back with us today. My name is Joe and you're watching Jamily TV. restaurant here at Fungalei Market. Don't forget to come down here to enjoy lunch and even dinner, breakfast. Beautiful day. Beautiful, Beautiful day. Thank, Thank you so, you so much. much. Ah. Bye. Bye. Okay. <laughs> hey guys, so we're here with Sean Taylor, the owner of the Wish You Were Here. Hey Sean, how's it going bro? Good. Good. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm just another ordinary Samoan guy trying to make a living, but uh, yeah. Thank you very much. This is a great day. And Can you tell us a little bit about your soup? It's an old family recipe, so I can't really give <laughs> that out. But I can tell you one thing. You guys got to come out and try it out. So, so far it's been pretty good. It's been uh, word of mouth. People have been coming down here just eating, having some, and they actually come down here sometimes with pots and sometimes with just a takeaway. So yeah, four o'clock in the morning, I'm up and start brewing this uh, thing out so that by 7, 7.30, sometimes eight o'clock, the beef is nice and soft. And then I start putting in what I need to put in to make it nice and tasty. Yeah, come out here and try it out. Nice, nutritious. You can see some pumpkins there, close to nice beef and carrot. Underneath there is also some nice potatoes. Sounds uh, yummy already. <laughs> we're gonna take two of those soups today. Excellent. We're gonna try it out. What do you Tell say you is what? right? Wish okay. you were here is the place. Yeah. <laughs> Wish you were here. Wish you were here is the place to come to. If this is your first time here with us, please consider hitting that subscribe button down that way. And if you've been here before, thank you so much for watching some more. Do you think we have a big day today? Oh, you look at all this food here. It's gonna make me feel good today. <laughs> I, did you take your gout medicine? Oh, I don't have gout, man. <laughs> <laughs> you should ask yourself that. <laughs> okay, so we came back to the market, but instead of getting like the, the crazy Samoan foods, we have the local favorites that you guys all know and love. Can you run us through? Okay, so um, as you can see, our table is full of nice, good food here. Okay, and so we've decided that we're gonna try most of the shops here. And we've got the famous soup here from Wish You Were Here. Which is true, we yeah. definitely wish you were here. <laughs> we also have some burgers, uh, chicken and chips, chop suey with taro or rice, barbecue, chicken chow mein, and also we've got the oka here, okay, fresh fish from one of the places at the back here, uh, fish and chips, mm -hmm. and a white bolo, okay, so that's what we're gonna try today. Yeah, I don't know if I told you this or not, but my auntie, she makes the best oka and palusami on the island, but she wasn't able to make it for us today, so we, we got this stuff here from Sugar Rush instead, but it'll do, it'll do. Yeah. I've also got my fan here. The purpose of this fan is to give Joe a hiding when he eats too much. <laughs> but really, it's for just getting the flies away. And Get also those flies to, away. Yeah, we need some, some more air today because we're going to be having a lot of this, this food today, okay? okay. Going to get the meat sweats. Yeah, that's right. So what are you going to tell us about today, Lama? Probably it's about food because we're just uh, <laughs> talking about food today. And usually, uh, you see a lot of the food on this table. This is exactly uh, the type of setting in a Samoan family, okay? So when when the chief or the high chief or the mum and the dad gets dished uh, with food, we give them all the best that we have, okay? And it doesn't mean that you have to eat all of them, okay? It's for them to choose. It's kind of like the the movies where like the king gets all the food and then he chooses which one he wants to have. And it's exactly what we're gonna have today. But this time we're gonna eat all the food. <laughs> now nah, you're gonna eat the food. I'm not gonna eat it all. <laughs> Can we start with the beef soup? Yeah. Okay. So is, we, is beef soup like a a staple Samoan food? I grew up having good soup. It is a staple Samoan food. Probably the potatoes from New Zealand or Australia from overseas, but everything else is locally grown. Okay. You have the beef here. I see pumpkin in here. Onions, uh, potatoes, carrots. Yeah. So let me know how you think about this. Well, local Samoan family. Eat, eat like a beef soup okay. every day or something like that. Yeah, they yep. would, you know, most of the Samoan families here, they would have meat every day. They prefer to have meat every day. And that's why you see a lot of the Samoans here nice and buff, uh, toned and 
and, and all because they like having the meat. It's always heavy food, okay? But not fatty food. It's always heavy, fresh, healthy food. So I apologize for my voice today if you can't hear me. It's because we were playing a game with our family on Monday and I lost my voice while I was while I was cheering on the, the kids. So um, Lama's going to do a lot of the talking today, hopefully. Because <laughs> you guys probably can't even hear me anyway. But let's get into the soup. Too okay. much talking. All right, I'll move my juice here. So my cousin Sean, he said he makes the best soup on island. And I want to prove that to you today. This is what we have today, okay? It's always basic. And then a lot of the Samoan families, nice to keep it nice and basic, okay? But I'm gonna try and I'm gonna let you know whether Sean did a good job or not, okay? Well, well let's watch Joe first. Come on, Joe, I want you to see... Uh, Cousin Sean. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. The potatoes are really nice and soft. Okay, so I'm gonna try this soup out, okay? Pumpkins. Let me try it one more time. Man, you know what's something funny about this soup? What? The only person on island that makes the best soup is my mother-in-law. So it and, tastes like your mother-in-law's? Oh, almost there. Almost there, but man, this is really good. I think Sean did a really good job in making this soup. It's not fatty. It's, it's kept it really nice and simple. The more you put stuff in it, a lot of families, they put noodles, uh, all sorts of vegetables, and then you kind of like, it gets the, the taste of it. You lose the taste of it. Yeah. Yeah. But this one here, man, this is beautiful. Nice big pieces of meat for you to enjoy. That's, a, that's one of like eight pieces of meat in here. You know, you see overseas, like a lot of families have their soup with uh, bread. Yeah. But over here, it's always gonna be a starchy food. So today, I've got taro here. A lot of families here, they always have their soup, mostly everything with taro or bread food or banana. But I'm used to that. My stomach is used to this. And that's why everyone's nice and bulky and muscular here. <laughs> so one of my first mukbangs, I ate palsami without eating it with kalo. And people went nuts. Yeah, you gotta have it with something starchy because it's rich. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> you got it. This place here, I just want to talk about this market here. A lot of the people that come and have lunch here, the people from the villages. So they come, they catch the bus in the morning. Uh, most of the families have cars now, but they just prefer to catch the bus because it's uh, a lot more cheaper and convenient. It's not like uh, buses overseas, Joe, where like you have a set time to arrive in a certain place. The buses here, they don't have bus stops. So you expect the bus to stop at every village, every spot. Say for example, the bus leaves at 4.30 in the morning, probably gets here at eight o'clock in the morning. 4.30 from where? 4.30 from the other side of the island. Okay, if you need to get to town from the other side, you just know you have to wake up at four o'clock. You have to be ready by four o'clock. That's the thing. If you have to catch the bus in the morning, sometimes the bus don't turn up at 4.30. Sometimes the bus gets there at quarter to four. Oh really? It's island time. Quarter to four, that's really early. Mm, it's really early because if it had designated bus stops and it's okay. So if the if I'm I'm here and you're right there like 10 meters away and you don't want to come and stand where I'm standing to catch the bus together, the bus stop the bus driver will just stop here at me and then just move a little bit to the front and pick you up. <laughs> he won't make that guy walk over uh, here. No 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 he won't. I see that's the thing, good thing about our people here is that they're kind of stopping sometimes, okay? If you're here and I'm just fr probably four steps away, the bus driver won't say anything but have to go and pick up that person because he needs that money from that person. It's crazy. What if he drives by him? Then he probably gets a stone on his bus. <laughs> yeah. For those of you that haven't been to Samoa, it's a common punishment. If you're being too loud at your house, people yeah. will throw a rock at your roof. Yeah, that's right. It's called a silent treatment. Is there a Samoan name for it? Kawai Ma. <laughs> Kawai Ma? Yeah. <laughs> so we were at a restaurant the other day, like two weeks ago, we were at a restaurant. There was these loud bangs on the roof. And I, and I was like, I thought we were like getting bombed or something. Mm. Uh, no, the, the people next to me was like, oh, it's just too loud. The music's too loud. I was like, it's a restaurant. What are you supposed to do? But <laughs> yeah, even the restaurants aren't safe. People from the other side of the river were lobbing rocks across the river yeah. onto the top of the restaurant. It always happens here, but people are used to it. As long as you don't get hurt and stay out of the way of the rock, <laughs> that's, 
That's the most important thing here. This soup is really good. Really Are you good already soup. finished? Now I'm just trying to base myself so I can get to all the food today. I didn't expect to get 12 dishes today, but this guy Joe has forced me to eat all of this. I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna have it for dinner, breakfast, and then lunch tomorrow, okay? I'm trying to hurry up and finish before we go to the next one, because this yeah. is really good soup. Ten Tan La comes with a massive piece of kalo, all the meat, all the vegetables, fantastic deal. That's, um, wish you were here, which is yeah. true. Again, we wish you were here. You know the market, the back, whenever you come, because a lot of people come from the villages, when you come in the morning, they have stores which sell these things here. They call pankeke. Yeah, and they have uh, ones made of banana and some just plain flour. This is the first thing that people would buy. So this one has banana in it. Yeah. How much is this? Uh, sometimes they're 10 cents each. Yeah. Okay. So people will just buy this and then just go on their way to work or to school. A lot of the kids just love having this because it's just a quick food. It's a spongy bread with some bananas inside. Um, it's kind of like banana bread that's been deep fried. That's, that's what it is. The difference that you look for when you're buying this is that when you look at the outside, it's got like these little red kind of like mini strips on it. I just bit my tongue. How bad is it? Hmm? Oh. <laughs> bad? It's bad, man. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> chop suey. Yeah, chop suey. Okay, so you see that two options here. Uh, one with rice. What? Yeah. It's got a bit of uh, watercress on the top. And then you also have an option of having it with banana or taro. From Lupus Catering, we're gonna try this one out. This is gonna be good. I really like their chop suey. So this is a uh, chicken chop suey. Okay. Three tawa for all of this. That's a high quality chop suey right there. What do you think? It looks beautiful. Mm. Tastes great. Man, I don't know if you guys saw that, but I bit my tongue <laughs> really hard when I was eating that pankeke, and it's like bleeding right now. And I feel like I have half my tongue in my mouth right now. <laughs> Gotta be careful. I was just so excited. Was it too excited to have all this food and <laughs> beat his tongue. <laughs> So what I really like about chop suey, a lot of soy sauce, some salt, yep. the noodles are real tender. Um, so far I haven't run into any bones, which you guys know I struggled getting bones out of food. This guy though, no problems. It's a piece of cake for me, I'm used to it. Put a whole lump of bone in my mouth, I can separate the meat and the bone. It's a technique you have to master. Go piece of chicken in, Yeah. only bone comes out. That's right. A little piece of chicken. Not a big chicken. We call it here sapasui. Kamaleaya ole. Ole aya. Oh, this is beautiful. I feel like we got too much food for Lama to eat. So we're just gonna go through taste. Because otherwise you guys are gonna be here with us for two hours. And Lama's gonna start crying. <laughs> He's not used to eating this much. You know, a lot of this food is commercially done now, but a lot of the food that's been prepped in Samoan families, they're all done by the untitled men or the just the young men and women in the families. And it's their duty, even if you're at school, this is one way to get yourself disciplined, is to go home, collect the rubbish, go collect some coconuts for the pigs. And then when it's five o'clock or six o'clock, that's where you start prepping the meals for your parents or the elderly in your families. I'll tell you this, a lot of the families and a lot of kids in the villages, they know how to cook. And the reason being is because their parents teach them at a very young age. How old were you when you started cooking? Oh, you don't want to hear this, but you know, my first umu, it was a disaster. The first umu that you were in charge yeah. of or the yeah. first one you watched? No, I was in charge of. I, I did it myself. You watch? Yeah. And then this umu, I, you I, just did this umu my all dad, by yourself? I watched my dad and my grandfather. I must say that my grandfather makes the best luau. Sorry, dad. But my grandfather makes the best luau. Next to my auntie. Yeah, so when you, with my first umu, because I sliced the taro in half, I put one half of the taro on top of the other one, and I forgot to put rocks on it. And I was so excited to go get it when it was ready. I opened it up, it wasn't even, wasn't even cooked. <laughs> and you know what happened? You got salsa? Oh, you know my grandma? Because this, this thing here has many purposes. 
Yeah. You can get a hit from this. You can get a bad hiding from this. Here. I feel like that doesn't yeah. hurt. So this oh, side here, side. this side here is how the oldies like really wow. give you a hiding. If this hits your head, man, it will, it will put a nice mark X on your head for the <laughs> for the whole week. Yeah. As I said, a lot of the kids they get taught how to make these simple dishes, simple but really nice dishes for their parents. I mean, to the elderly, it doesn't matter how it tastes like, whether it comes and it tastes like yuck, they're not gonna say to, to whoever cooked it, oh man, your chop suey tastes yuck. No, they'll probably just say some words of encouragement and say, oh, you know, son, that's really nice. Which is, thank you for cooking, thank you for preparing. How many yeah. times do they give you a pass until they smack you because you're not doing a good job? Uh, I've never seen I've never seen anyone get a hiding from gripping any bad food, but they get told off for serious stuff. Like, say for example, if it's a uh, umu or some main dishes for an important event in the village, like for the church or for school or for the village, and it comes out of the oven not cooked, that's the only time where you hear your parents tell you off because it's you not know, for your family, it, yeah. it's for other people. Yeah, and also it's a shame for me yeah. as an untitled man or me as a person that cooked because everyone in the village, if they find out that, you know, I didn't get my food right, they'll probably mock me and say, man, like that guy there, man, he doesn't even know how to cook. And all the girls, all the girls in the village will try avoid proposing or saying, oh, I don't want to date you because you don't know how to cook. That's one thing that you've got to learn as a young person growing up in the islands, is that you've got to master all this, because if you're not going to master it, you'll probably end up by yourself for the rest of your life. <laughs> when you're young and growing up in Samoa, the men are cooking. The men are what are the cooking. girls doing? So the girls usually they do the washing and also weaving. Okay, so they weave like fine mats for families to sleep on. In the last video, you were talking about everyone in their in their family and in the village has roles. And so this is kind of what you're talking about today: is that one of the men's roles is to cook. The men's role is always to look after the family. Okay. Okay. Make sure that there's food for the family and pertain to village matters, because nowadays women are now blessed with Matai titles. But when I grew up, there was hardly any women that were blessed with that. And so men were the only one that would go sit in, in a village sitting and discuss matters pertaining to the families or a village. And then they come home and make sure that there's food for the elderly. We always think about nowadays about there should be food for our children or our kids. But back then, it's always about the elderly. We make sure we take care of the elderly and then we just see the blessings come. I think one of the good lessons about this is because it's so abundant and it's just too much yeah. and then they look at it and it's like oh you know this is so much food for us I wish we could share it mm. and uh, this is a good thing about Samoan families is that say for example if Joe lives right next door to me whenever we have food in the morning or lunch or afternoon we always share my family is making chop suey the first thing that my grandma or my grandfather or my parents would say make sure there's a dish for the next door they always put someone first even if you they don't would, know that they, family very well yeah even if we don't know that family very very well okay they always would say make sure that you take there's a dish going next door and if there's an elderly person next door that's the most important thing for them even though it's not their parents they're not related through blood or anything their main responsibility is that there is food going to the elderly next door that's how unselfish that they were is that why you always bring me pizza that's why I always bring now, now you get it eh? <laughs> But that's a funny thing, because a lot of the times like I have friends that come overseas and we're always going to drop things off to them. Yeah. And they say, why are you bringing me so much food? But I can't tell you I'm bringing it because of so and so. That's something, that's a hidden treasure for me, is not to tell the person the reason why I bought it. Because I've been brought up with that kind of lifestyle, so it's just a natural thing for me just to give. Okay? Yeah. It's a give thing. You know, it's not it's not about what you're getting back. Say for example, like if you give me your camera after this. Are you asking for the camera? No, you I'm not asking for the camera. I'm just saying if you give me your camera after this and then you don't you don't ask me for it again, then I know that you've given it with all your heart. Is that why? <laughs> So if somebody steals my slippers, I need to ask that, for my slippers no, back? No, 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 that's a different, well, that's actually a different thing. But you know what my grandma would say? What? If someone next door would steal my shoes, my genitals, and then I find out that that person is taking it, and I decide to go and get it back, my grandma would say to me, oh, just let them have it. You'll get other genitals. And I'm thinking there, man, that's the only pair of jandals that I have. I don't have money, I don't have anything. How am I gonna get another pair of jandals? So I get to walk barefooted for the rest of that school term, man. 
So it's really funny. I mean, life in Samoa is it's all about giving. And you can see that very clearly when you go to the outer villages. I think it's just the joy that they they get feeling that, oh, I've already given that palangi, I've already given that tourist this and that. You know when something happens, when you go on the other side and say for example, you fall into a ditch or something, you see like everyone in the True. village will come and try to get you out of the ditch. True. Yeah. True. If they laugh at you, they're not laughing at you for a silly reason. They're just laughing at you because they just like to laugh. <laughs> Watching movies in Samoa is definitely an experience. So if you come visit Samoa and you've never been here, make sure to go watch like a kind of serious movie because Samoans laugh at everything. If somebody dies in a movie, they laugh at it. Like Castaway movie. I know it came out 20 years ago or whatever, but Samoans love to laugh at stuff like that. You know, it's, it's nothing bad about it. It's just a sense of humor that Samoan people have. Are you full already? No, I'm just trying to explain to our viewers. <laughs> what I can't, I'm, oh, that's the other thing, Joe. What? You know, in a Samoan custom, yeah. you cannot talk and eat. Oh boy, I write yeah. that all the time. Yeah. This guy has forced me to talk <laughs> and eat. There's something, one, one golden rule that my parents and my grandparents always taught me. Do not walk and drink and do not walk and eat. Do not talk and eat. Yeah. My mom tried to teach me that, but... But for today's purpose, that's fine because I don't know how we're gonna explain to you how this tastes like if we're not gonna talk at the same time. So it's okay. <laughs> Well, I hope that the youth for our island will watch this, uh, have some sort of proud feeling about how things should be, because a lot of the kids, they've lost the plot. They don't listen to their parents anymore. They don't respect them anymore. But over here, it's always about giving and respecting your elders. Okay, so I've eaten half of my, my barbecue from Fia's barbecue, yeah. which is over there. And you haven't tried it yet, so I want you to try that one. Well, did you have your chop suey? I already ate it. Oh, okay. Oma. I'm saving my chop suey for tonight. <laughs> I'm still with that system where I just eat a little and then I save it for someone in the family. It's a good thing. Okay, so I wanted to tell you my story about this when I was young. Lama is telling you about giving the food away to other families so that they could um, appreciate that blessing also. When I was a kid, I was maybe 10 or 11 years old. Yeah, that's nice, huh? Beautiful. Yeah, that's five tala. Five tala, two pieces of chicken, a sausage, and rice. Sam one tala. Yeah. That's really cheap. Crazy, huh? This is two US dollars for two pieces of chicken, and it's nice, it's a sweet teriyaki sauce. Yeah. Real nice. Anyway, so I was probably 10 or 11 years old. From my parents, I would make a dollar every week if I cleaned my room and stuff and uh, did all my homework. And so sometimes I did that and sometimes I didn't. So I knew that Mother's Day was coming up, right? I bought my mom this beautiful corsage. It was like this big. This corsage cost 10 US dollars, and I saved my money for more than two months, almost three months, to, to buy my mom this corsage, right? I go to the store, I'm so excited because I worked so hard to save my money for my mom for this corsage. So Mother's Day comes around, I give it to my mom, and I like, out of my own benevolence, you know, I say, oh, this is from me and my brothers and my sisters. And mom is so happy and stuff. And we get to church and it's Mother's Day. And then like after church, I say, mom, mom where's, where's your corsage at? She's like, oh, I gave it to Karen Ofterhaar. I was like, what do you mean you gave it to Karen? Because Karen was in our church. She was in her uh, late 20s or maybe early 30s and she hadn't gotten married yet and she was having a hard time because it was Mother's Day and she wasn't a mother yet. And so my mom, she gave Karen the corsage oh. and for me, it broke my heart. But for mom, now I understand it a little now, bit now better. Now you get it, yeah. now you get it. Now I get it, because my mom was trying to uh, to help somebody else mm. in in their time of, of troubles and stuff. And so, uh, I mean, typical, that's my mom, so. That's exactly what we need nowadays, is to actually keep helping others, yeah. okay? This barbecue is the best. Fierce barbecue down here at the market, it's really nice and cooked nicely. You know that lady, Fia? Yeah, I don't know her. Yeah, she's from our district. Oh, you know her? Yeah. We used to grow up catching the bus together to come to school in the morning. You and Fia? Yeah, me and Fia. Really? Yeah. I don't think she knows me, but she she knows me uh, by my name. But she used to come on the same bus that I come. I catch every morning, 4:30 <laughs> in the morning. This barbecue is really nice. I think they have another brunch in Baikili. They do. You're right. Baikili, you saw. Yeah. My tongue really hurts. You know what you do? Octopus. Put octopus no. on it. Get some salt water, warm warm water, put salt in it, and then just sit there and put your tongue in. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll do that. Are we gonna try this now? Yeah. I just got one. It's like a stir fry. Yeah, from Tofi's restaurant. 
Toffee's restaurant yep. just down there. Here, we'll try the stir fry and the fish and chips at the same time. Is that from Toffee? Yep, so these two are from Toffee's. A lot of times you don't get tartar sauce here in Samoa, mm -hmm. but this one came with some tartar sauce. Mm -hmm. And here's the fish. That's right. You know, I look at this um, fillet. They wasted all the meat. What do you mean? You know, someone in the village would say, oh man, that's a waste. Because they throw the head, the bones, the skeleton all away. Because that's the most juicy part of the fish. Since Joe's going to turn the music off, I'm enjoying this. It's always good to have a lot of fish, fast food from the market. But you gotta make sure that you go to the gym after. That. And Joe doesn't know. Hey, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> good fish? Mm. Five time long. Really nice. Five time long with the chips and the tartar sauce, too. We got cucumbers as well. Nice, fresh, organically grown. It's beautiful. That's real nice. I like that. Did you try this? Not yet. Are you going to finish your piece of fish? You want to have it? No, I want you to eat it. I give you the respect to finish it. I give it back. That's one thing you got to learn. What? When I give, you say I give it back, it's the second person that says, you give, you have it. And then you shouldn't answer me back. Okay, so teach me again. So if I offer you something, yeah. and you say, no, you have it. Yeah. And then I say to you, no, no, you take it. When I say it twice, it's Then I have to take it. Then you have to take it. So if you say, you want this, and then I say, no, you eat it. And then you say, no, you take it. Then I have to take it. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I, I tell you, you have it. And then you say, okay, I'll have it. But you know, when you're full, you're not going to eat it. All you can say is, yeah, I'll have it. And then just leave it there on the plate. You don't have to eat it. But what if you really want it? As much as I want it, I can't have it because I'm giving you the respect to eat it. So where are we at right now? We're both lost. <laughs> <laughs> I think I understand. This stays here. I think that's what no, you said. That's the answer to that. <laughs> what is it? Oka. Okay. It's a fresh one. Coconut cream in there and you also put some vegetables in it. You know the way I like having my oka? I just had the fish in there, the coconut cream, mix it with a bit of cold water. Do you put chili sauce in there? I never use chili sauce. I'm not really a chili person, but I don't like vegetables in my oka. I can eat it, but I don't like vegetables. I just like to stick to the usual original Samoan style of oka where you just have the fish, coconut cream, and a bit of cold water, salt, and that little nice lemon. What about onions? Nah, I don't. No onions either? Nah. We never grew onions before, remember? Onions is a new thing. Really? That's really nice, huh? They've used a different lemon on this. Mm. Oh, that hurts my tongue. Because it's got lemon in it. Yeah. That's why you should... You don't listen, do you? Woo! Mm. Very nice. I really like oka. And this is one of the best. So this is four tai lak. When huh? you're making oka, make sure you don't put too much lemon juice in it. Is that too much lemon juice no, for you? Almost. But you got to make sure that the mix is nice and balanced. This is a little bit too much of a lemon. lemon Which juice. is probably why I like it. Yeah. Because it all depends. that lemon juice kind of gives it a little bit of a sweeter flavor, mm. which kind of goes towards my liking. Whereas Lama, he wants something a little bit less sweet. And less vegetable. <laughs> As you can see, this is one good thing about here too. You know, couples usually they share their plate of food. So are you saying we're sharing, we're a couple, we're sharing food? No. Oh, wait, not, can not you share even. food in here somewhere? Yeah, because when parents get their food, they have one called a lau lau, where they have their taro or probably a fish on it. It's just a way to show that they are together as one forever. So that's what we're doing? It's, I think, you know why? This is my brother. I think the reason being is because if he has a plate there, say for example, I'm the man and he's the wife. If he has his plate there and I have my plate here, and we had an argument earlier in the day. So what's the whole purpose of having two plates apart? They won't make them talk, but if we share the same plate, we eat together and then next minute, hey darling, how was your day? I'm sorry about today. See, that's, that's, there's a lot of things that, hey, it really matters when you share the plate. I like it. How was that? I love it. This is three tai la for a nice scoop of noodles. When you come down to Samoa, you just gotta come down to the market. If you're looking at the Pungale fruit and vegetable market, just go to the left. And they have all these restaurants here. There's like six of them here. They all offer unique foods and really good mm -hmm. and low cost. Definitely something you should hit up when you come to Samoa. The key to all this is when you come here, it's disrespectful to come and eat without inviting me and Joe. <laughs> so you have to call us. You can find us on Joe's YouTube channel. <laughs> and tell us, please, Joe and Lama, you need to come and take us to where you ate this, okay? So make sure you hit the subscribe button and message us, okay? <laughs> Burger time. Burger time. This is one of your favorites.
I love burgers. Burgers yeah. is my favorite. Joe, whenever he comes to my place, man, this guy goes crazy over burgers. I'm, I'm always telling Lama to let me come to his house to let me cook him some burgers. But he keeps saying no. So I guess what I should say is I should say again, okay, let me cook you burgers. And then he has to say yes, right? <laughs> Still trying to find a way to come to my house. <laughs> This is a nice burger. Yeah, it looks really delicious, man. This burger is from Rada Eats. And Anna made it for us. She also made this chicken and chips in front of us. Half burger for you, half for me. Oh, this is a uh, juicy burger. I don't know if I can pick it up. Wow. There we go. So this one is full of juice and sauce, salad and cheese, mayonnaise, onions, and ketchup, and two patties. Yeah. It's a big burger. That's a good thing because Rada makes her own bun and bread. So I'm sure the bread and the bun tastes beautiful. What's it like? Very nice, nice yep. Very good. Mmm. Wow. Wow, Joe, this is really nice. There's a nice. lot of sauce on there. Mm. Come try out this place at Rada's. Come support your local restaurants here. This is beautiful. Wow. So for me, you know, I'm always honest with you guys on how food tastes. The, the meat in this burger tastes really good. The cheese though, it's a really sharp cheddar and I'm not a big fan of sharp cheddar cheese. That's my only takeaway on this one is I wish that there was a different kind of cheese, like an American cheese or maybe a, an Edam cheese, E-D-A-M, it's a common cheese here in Samoa, instead of the sharp cheddar. Are you full? No, I'm not full. Good, because we got yeah, chicken and got chips. Cheese, chicken and chips coming up. Have you been on a bus before? No. You serious? <laughs> I just haven't had the opportunity. I need to just make it happen. I just haven't I just haven't made it happen yet. Man, we need to go on a bus. When's the last time you were on a bus? That's a really good question. I was in college, 93. The last time I was on a bus one night was 1999. That's 20 years ago. Yeah, global bus, 20 years ago. Then I went away for uni and I still caught the bus. Came over there? Over there. But so ever since you came back 20 years ago, you haven't been on a bus? Ever since I got back, I, uh, that's one thing about here. You graduate from one step to another, okay? So I graduated from catching a bus. I've got a car now. So are we gonna catch the bus and eat a, eat our food on the bus next time? Well, we have to ask the bus driver. <laughs> oh yeah? Yeah. You can't eat on the bus? Oh, you can. But what sort of food are you thinking about? I don't know. Chicken and chips. Oh, you can have your chicken and chips on the bus. That's fine. I thought you wanted a lot of dishes on the bus. No, just one. Type Which of one of these food? chicken do you want? I want the drumstick. Okay. The okay. chicken and chips is from Rada Eats. It's nice. Go for it, Joe. Yeah, nice and crispy. Beautiful. Just the way you would expect chicken and chips to be. All right, I wanted to show you guys this before we go. We've eaten something from basically every restaurant here. Along this trip. So these brownies come from Sugar Rush. Yeah, there it is. So these brownies are five tala each, but they're nice and thick. Which one of these do you want? This one here. Get it. All right. What I wanted to show you was how thick these, these things are. Look at that. This is a chocolate peanut butter brownie and then a, a standard brownie with lots of powdered sugar, icing sugar. That's nice. Yeah, my wife makes brownies too. This is really nice. Your wife's brownies are better. My wife's brownies are always better because I'm on uh, Chimney TV. I don't want to say that your brownies are not better. Or else I'll get a hiding tonight. With, but, with the end of the fan. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But this is really nice. I think it's really better if you have it with a nice cold glass of milk. Oh man, it would be awesome. I didn't see any milk here, so we didn't get that. Seems like we're gonna have to take these home and get some milk when we get home. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you joining us today, Lama. Thank you, Joe. Lama says he's gonna come join us maybe once a month. I think uh, we'll try to take you to the other side, going through the bus, let you have a look at how the life in the Samoan villages are done. So uh, you wanna go on a bus? Okay, so here he's saying it right now. We're going on a bus. We're going on a bus. To the and we're village. going to the village, yeah. and we're gonna do something over at the village. We're gonna show you how to fish using not a fishing rod, but a Samoan fishing rod, okay? That sounds exciting. So if you guys are excited for that, Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Yep. Make sure to share it with your friends. Yeah, that's all. Have a great day. Pass away for it.